Hello and welcome, it's Bill Skladowski and it's time for another exciting edition of iPhone Friday. I know, I know you're thinking it, I know. Wait, what? iPhone Friday, wait, how long has it been? A long, long time, my friends, and uh, I apologize for being away. Uh, for yours truly, it's been a year of substantial life changes, a little more gray hair. I'm happy to say a few less pounds, uh, but here we are with the... Uh, same old iPhone, iPhone 8, <laughs> and some new videos to uh, help you with your iPhone and or iPad. Now, uh, before we dig in, a friend of mine, when I talked about restarting the video series, a friend of mine reminded me that, um, you know, most of my audience, probably all of my audience, is what I would call elder technology users. <laughs> I've been trying to think of a good way to say it. I mean, we're older, let's face it, right? And sometimes the technology just doesn't come as easy as it does to young people. I get that. But I want you to know that I'm here to help you to figure it out and to get the most out of your iPhone or iPad tech. Um, you know, you've done this before. I mean, if you're as old as I am, and we're not going to get into the numbers, you probably did like I did. When it was time to change the channel on the television, you got up from the couch and you walked over and you turned the knob so you could watch one of the other two or three channels that you had to watch. Am I right? And now what? You've got a remote with 250 channels and the DVR, the recorder, the different sound bar and all that stuff. You got this. You know this. And yet a lot of my friends will uh, say that, oh, it's tech, it's so hard, it's so, I can't figure it out. Well, I'm here to say that you can and that it's not that hard. It's just different from what you've done in the past. And so we're going to boldly go where no one has gone before and uh, do a little bit on technology. So um, today I thought we would dig in a little bit with a couple of things that I have found very helpful for me, and that's these widgets that are on your iPhone or iPad. So let's get into the iPhone screen here and see if we can't get that going. And with that in mind, yep, there we are, I've got it. Let's talk widgets. Widgets are those big, the big things you see on your screen. I don't, I don't have a better way to say it. Okay, normally an iPhone screen, of course, is all just small, you know, uh, little app buttons like that. Widgets, on the other hand, are the bigger things, like the clock on my upper left there and the uh, Google search. We're going to talk about both of those. They're basically a way of using an app to, to have it show you information without having to open the app and go through that process, okay? Now, obviously, sometimes it's a lot easier than others, but, you know, sometimes you could have, like, I just wish I could see if I have any new emails or if I what my calendar is for today, or in this case, do a quick Google search. We'll talk about that. First, let's see how you get a widget onto your iPhone. So, over at the iPhone, um, if, you'll, if you've ever moved an app around or deleted an app, you know that the way that you do that is simply to lay your finger for just a few seconds on some open real estate on the phone. Now, what do I mean by open real estate? Well, if your phone has nothing but apps and buttons on it, right, even at the bottom, you see there at the bottom row, there's some open space there before the very bottom of the phone. And here on my homepage, I have a little bit of extra space there beneath the bottom row with music and YouTube and maps and stuff. There's some open space there. So literally, if I just lay my finger on there and let it rest for a few seconds, the apps will start to jiggle. That's the technical term. <laughs> they jiggle. I don't know what their real term is. But up in the upper right is the plus sign, and that's where we want to go. So tap on that plus sign, and now you'll get to the widgets menu. And there's dozens of them. There's all kinds. There's photos and your email and your calendar and all sorts of things. If you wanted to, let's get back to that. If you wanted to, the easiest way to find something is simply to search for it. So see at the top where it says search widgets? If I just tap on that and start typing, for example, clock, C-L-O-C-K, there it is, right? And now when I tap on it, it shows me that there are not one, but four different clocks that I can have on my screen. There's this one with the white background. Uh, there's another one with a black background. 
There's another one with, oh, there's four different clocks for you travelers. You can set them for four different time zones. And then here's another one with four different in the you know long way. But I already have the clock. I already have the white one. Let's put the black one on there as well. Okay, so if I just tap on that on the bottom where it says add widget, it's going to add that clock to my home screen, right? Now, I'm, let's get rid of the, well, I don't need the one that's a cup. What is cup? That's Cupertino. That's where Apple's headquarters is. So, of course, they set the clock to Cupertino, even though I'm nowhere near California. So I'm going to get rid of that one. I'm just going to tap on the minus sign up in the upper left corner, and it's going to say remove it. Yes, I'll keep the one that I have. All I have to do is press on the home button or just tap on the screen again, and everybody stops jiggling, and we're back to where we started from, okay? So I do see that I have to rearrange now. I moved the clock over, and everybody got out of place there. So I'll fix that later. Let's talk about the Google search widget underneath it. If you wanted to, to add Google, okay, again, same thing, lay my finger on the screen, wait for everybody to jiggle, tap on the plus sign in the upper right, and then just do a search for Google, G-O-O, -O, there it is, not the maps, but the regular Google app, okay, and then I tap on it and I add it and that's what I'm going to get. I kind of jumped ahead there, but you know the trick. Now, you can just lay your finger on the screen, tap, lay your finger on the screen, Tap on the plus sign up there in the upper right corner. Do a search for what you're looking for or scroll through the list. Find something you like. Tap on it. Add it to your screen. Tap again. Make everybody stop jiggling. We're back. We're back to where we go. We're back to where we belong. So to do a search with the Google search widget, it's just as simple as tapping. Literally, you see where the word search is. If I tap on that word search, it's going to open up a different screen. And just like Google on your computer, you start typing. Okay. So... I've already done some searches there, as you can see, like Mexican restaurants near me. If I tap on that one again, it's going to show it to me. You might have heard, did you hear anything? I didn't hear anything, but when I play it back, sometimes I can hear it speaking. So I'm sorry if I talked over somebody there. But anyway, then it's just like a Google search on your regular computer, right? Real simple, easy, great, love it. Now, that's cool, but <laughs> you could take it up a notch and use the voice search. See where it says voice search with the little microphone? So if I just tap on that, watch what happens. It opens up another screen that says speak now and it's listening to me as I talk. Of course, I don't want to confuse it. So let's let's close that. And let me just tell you what's going to happen. It's very much like Siri on your phone. If you've used Siri to do anything, to do a math equation or find something or navigate somewhere or define a word or something like that, but this is Google, and honestly, when it comes to searching for things, I still got to hand it to Google. They're a little better than Siri is when it comes to really searching for stuff, right? So I don't know if I wanted to know, you know, what the, we're, as I record this, we're in the middle of uh, basketball, NHL and NBA playoffs, you know, basketball and hockey playoffs, okay? So I could, let's do a search for that. If I tap on search, now I'm not going to, I'm not going to talk for a second. I'm going to let it do the search while I give it the thing to search for. NBA playoffs tonight. And there you go. It's going to give you, and again, I don't know if it spoke or not. I didn't hear anything, but you might've heard it on the, on the video. And it shows me the Google results for the playoffs. Now, yes, you can do this with Siri. It's not quite as good. <laughs> I'm going to be honest. I love Apple. I'll never not have an iPhone. Google search is better. Okay, I just said it. There you go. I said it. All right, fine. So, again, you can do the search. There's the Google Lens, which is, that's a whole other subject for a whole other day. So is Incognito. Incognito, I'll tell you this ever so briefly. If you're somebody who's concerned about um, security, and uh, making sure that your information stays private. When you do a search with Google, you know, people always ask me that. Gee, when I do a search, does Google remember what I searched for? Yes. <laughs> Every time, everything you search for, all the time, they know what you have searched for. Now, incognito fixes this. It doesn't record what you have searched for, and it doesn't keep a record of anything when you use the incognito mode. And so if you want to, you can hit on incognito and it will even tell you right off the top. It says activity and search history will not be available because, well, we don't record them. Okay. So if you're somebody who's concerned about that sort of thing, 
feel free to use the incognito search when you use Google search. And you can do the same thing on your computer at home as well. Okay. So that's going to do it for a quick review and update on widgets uh, for this iPhone Friday. I hope you've enjoyed the video. If you have, please give a, a like to it down below. If you're new here and haven't seen any of these before, please feel free to hit the subscribe button below and even the bell icon, and then you'll be notified when new videos come out. But I'll tell you right now that my plan is to do them every Friday for iPhone Friday on YouTube, Facebook, other social media outlets as well. If you have questions, please feel free to ask. Anywhere you have a comment box, I review them all. And if you know there's something that I missed or something that I can do to make it easier for you, remember the mission here is always about making it easy for you to get the most out of your technology. Uh, we will address that as they come up. Thanks again for watching. We'll see you next Friday. This is Bill for iPhone Friday.